Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast covers everything tech. The hottest mobile phones, tablets, games. We review it, rate it, test it. Whether you're Microsoft or Apple, Android or iPhone, we'll give it to you. Again and again. Black and white. The Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the GSMC Technology Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie J. Quish, and I thought today it'd be really fun if instead of looking at the news of what is happening today in technology, let's look back on the past couple of years and see what has failed and what will not be coming with us into the next decade. As always, if you're not, please subscribe to this podcast and write a review down below. We absolutely love hearing from you, and I would love to hear what you'd like me to talk about next, or if you have a comment on what was talked about on today's episode. So without further ado, let's get right into the podcast. It's easy to say that over the past decade, we have made huge advances in the technology world. How many of those advances will be coming with us into the next decade? Air power. For those of you that don't know, air power was the idea of a mat that could charge your iPhone, Apple Watch, and all of your Apple products on one sheet. You wouldn't need separate plugins. You could just lie them on this mat. Originally, this idea was slated to come out in 2017 alongside the Series 3 Apple Watch. However, due to overheating problems, Apple pulled the project. It was then slated to come out later in 2018, however, also was delayed and has officially been blacklisted. Some people still say that there's a small glimmer of hope for the iPower mat since the new iPhone coming out in 2021 will no longer have the ability to be charged with a cord. So the question is, how will we be able to charge our iPhones? So the number one theory is is that the iPower map is currently under construction and will be coming out in early 2021. However, based on the past, I would not cross my fingers for that too much. Instead, I'd be holding on tight to my Apple phone and making sure that nothing happens to it or perhaps switching brands if you're worried about not being able to charge your phone in 2021. The next one is a bit of a sad one, iTunes. Oof, I know, guys, it's hard to believe that iTunes will not be coming with us in the next decade. However, most of us use Apple Music now, if not Spotify or other apps. iTunes is no longer available on most Apple computers, and the last version that I had was filled with different problems and wasn't the best place for me to store or organize my music anymore. However, I'll always be appreciative since that is how I burned most of my CDs throughout high school. So thank you, iTunes, and we hope you rest in peace. All right, guys, this is a sensitive one, so prepare to be triggered. But Google Plus, ah, we all wanted it to work and it just didn't. Google Plus was supposed to be Facebook's main competitor, I guess is a great way to put it. It was supposed to be like the... Batman to Facebook Superman. However, it ended up being more like Facebook's weird cousin sidekick that maybe is in a couple episodes but doesn't really do anything. It was more like the scrappy do to Facebook shaky do. There were so many problems that came out with Google Plus, and honestly, I don't know anyone who ever actually used the social media platform. So I think it's a good thing that this will not be coming with us in the next decade. However, what will be interesting is seeing which social media platforms stand the test of time. I know many people no longer use Facebook. However, it is still an active platform and a lot of companies use it for their marketing. So will it stay or will it be gone by 2030? Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on which social media platforms will be coming with us in the next decade. 3D. Although most animated movies are still pushed out with the 3D effect, I think it's safe to say that it is nobody's preferred source of entertainment. Instead, the technology has been used more as a gimmick for promoting the Smurfs movie more than anything. So over the next 10 years, I'm sure there will be a lot of ways to improve entertainment through technology. However, I do not see 3D coming with us into the next decade. QR codes. I mean, other than the airport, I don't know many people that still use these. 
QR codes. I mean, other than the airport, I don't know many people that still use these. But it was the idea that a cereal box or a movie ticket, they were on food packaging, magazine billboards, and even appearing on TV commercials. You could simply scan your phone with the scan app and be entered to win prizes or into a contest. Or that was a way for you to be able to buy an item. Nowadays, you don't get to see a lot of QR codes, mostly because it was more frustrating to use than anything. So they slowly started to drift away, and people just eventually stopped using them as both a technology tool and a marketing device. All right, again, this is going to be another devastating hit. I'm sorry to anybody who was hoping this would come with us into the next decade, and I'm sorry that it isn't. But Pokemon Go needs to stay in the past 10 years. So I'm not saying this game wasn't popular or that it didn't deserve the hype, but it definitely isn't something that I see people continue to play or will be playing for the next 10 years. However, at a time it was extremely popular, it had an estimated 45 million people logging on to play this game every single day. And I remember at the time I was working at a TV station and half of it was under construction and I remember people going in through the construction zone trying to catch Pokemon because trying to catch Pokemon characters because their phone notified them that there was one near so they were running around and I remember nobody really made eye contact because they were looking at the imaginary people through their phone and then it's really weird because I remember one day it just stopped suddenly people were no longer playing it and so it only took one month for 10 million people to abandon their Pokemon Go game. And honestly, if it was that easy for people to abandon a month after its release, I do not see Pokemon Go coming with us into the 2020s. I'm sorry for anyone who is still playing that game. Good for you. Keep going and maybe you'll catch them all one day. Ebook readers. So we definitely all got one as a Christmas gift from our grandparents or new friends who got them as Christmas gifts and they let us borrow them. But they really didn't become popular until 2011, even though the technology had been released in 2008. So in 2011, there was a spike and 23.2 million e-readers were shipped during their peak of popularity. Now, in the latest look at 2016, only 7.1 million were being shipped. And I believe now in 2020, it would be an even lower number. So definitely don't expect to see many e-readers on the beach over the next 10 years. Let me just ask you this. Why does every technology firm, industry, company, what have you, feel the need to create their own version of the iPhone? There are just so many other things they could be inventing that we don't need another version of the phone. Like, we got that. It's covered. Let's do something new. I'm all for innovation, so let's try making the phone better instead of just another phone. The Amazon Fire Phone, unfortunately, was a failure on this part. People felt a very similar way that I do to all of these phones in general, that it was more gimmicky than anything. It had its biggest sell point was the face scanning feature that people just didn't really care for, and it made it just too awkward to open your phone in public is a complaint that I heard. Amazon pulled the product a year after its release, so clearly it did not do well enough to even get past its anniversary. The Amazon Fire Phone is definitely something that we can leave in the past decade. Goodbye. Hope to see you never. Google Glass. Ugh. This brings back memories of watching Wally. Google released these Google Glasses in early 2013 at the steep price tag of $1,500. It was basically the idea that this pair of glasses could be worn and you could Google things through the cameras that were in there and it would appear right in front of your face. You wouldn't need a phone or a laptop in front of you. It would be all through these glasses. So obviously there were a lot of problems with this product to begin with from the high price tag to the awkward look of the glasses. I mean, no one wanted to walk around wearing a weird TV antenna like headband over their eyes all day and businesses full and banned them from their establishments. They didn't want people with cameras in front of their faces. So so Google pulled the plug on Google Glass in 2015 with a promise that they would come out with a better version in the near future. So although this technology will not be coming with us into the next decade, we can probably bet that a different version of this technology will be released sometime in the 2020s. Facebook Home. In 2013, Facebook thought that they were 
the main thing everyone did on their phone, which in 2013, they probably were. So the idea of Facebook Home was that you could open your Android phone and immediately be able to post, message other users without having launched any of the apps. However, nobody ended up using the app. The app was eventually canceled because it had poor reviews and no one really liked how pushy it was. It was constantly telling you you need to post a status or a photo or message this person. Social media is supposed to be fun and this technology took the fun and the freedom away from it. So Facebook Home will definitely not be coming with us in in the next decade. Google Lively. Honestly, guys, I had to look this one up this morning because it felt like a dream that I had and that it wasn't a real thing. But back in 2008, Google released their own version of Second Life with Google Lively. It was a virtual world that you could go in through Google and you could you could go into virtual chat rooms. You could create a Second Life, you know, jobs, friends, careers, all of that. It was sort of... um um, getting an escape from your own life without playing a full-on video game. However, nobody really used it, mostly because it was compared to Facebook as a messaging platform, and Facebook was obviously a lot bigger at the time. So Google Lively slowly just faded off. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take another break from the podcast. But when we come back, I want to take a small detour on our countdown of the worst products of the past decade. And I want to talk about some amazing advances we made in the technology world. Just for a moment, I want to touch on some of the good. So stay tuned for that because you are listening to the GSMC Technology Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll be right back. Do you work in the world of marketing and advertising? Are you a media buyer or the owner of an agency? Have you been looking for a podcast to help stay on top of all the goings-on of those worlds? The GSMC Marketing News Podcast is dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning marketing and advertising. Get the latest marketing news from what major businesses have planned for the coming year to the newest trends in advertising from podcasts, digital and streaming to the old standbys of radio, television and billboards. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast has you covered whether you're a marketing agent or a business trying to expand your brand. Hello and welcome back to the GSMC Technology Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and before the break, we were talking about all of the biggest, I don't want to say fails of the decade in technology, but definitely technology that will not be coming with us into the next decade. Just for a moment, though, I do want to step away from the countdown and talk about some of the advances we made in technology that have greatly improved our lives and the world around us. So the first one I want to talk about is the next-gen electric cars that could be plugged in and charged instead of using gas. So far, over 95,000 have been sold over the past couple of years since the release of the next-gen electric car. And I think, honestly, guys, this is the stuff that makes me believe we are living in the future. It seems very, like, Jetsons, as it is something that is innovative, helping the environment, but it's still practical for the everyday user. So I would definitely consider the next-gen electric car to be at the top of the list of technologies that were created over the past 10 years that will be coming with us in the next decade. Of course, we can't complete this list. Of course, we can't complete this list without talking about the main thing every kid asked for over the past 10 years from Santa, which is an iPad. In 2010, Apple released the tablets and kids have not been able to stop talking about them since. Honestly, you go to a mall, you see a kid in a car, you're at a park even, you will see an iPad closely connected with them. And I will not comment if that is good or bad. I will say, however, my computer turns into an iPad and I love it. I'm definitely counting iPads as being a technology that we will bring into the next decade. 
All right, one of my personal favorites, Instagram. Instagram came out in October of 2010 with 25,000 people signing up on the first day. By 2011, the app was sold to Facebook for $1 billion. This is obviously something that everyone uses every day. It is not something, I will say, has greatly improved our lives or society, but it is something that will be following us into the next decade. The Amazon Echo that was released in 2014. This finally allowed us, I feel like, to get that personal assistant that we all want but can't afford. Not that all of us can afford the Amazon Echo either, but she definitely is a lot more affordable than a, than a university freshman that you have to pay by the hour. So the Amazon Echo, for those of you that don't know is a digital assistant right in your home. You can be cooking and be like, Alexa, I need you to remind me to pick up tomatoes or I need you to pay the power bill. Here's my credit card information. So now obviously there's a lot of security risks that go into using an Amazon Echo and make sure you always look into your safety settings before using one. But they definitely are a innovative technology that I believe will be a huge part of the next decade. All right, guys, I feel as though I have been leaving you hanging long enough. We are going to get to the number one technology that should stay in the past decade right now. All right, guys, the last one on our list is sort of just more of a funny one that I wanted to put a bit of a smile on your face before the new year ends because I know we were talking a lot about failure in this podcast episode, but I definitely want to leave you on a bit of a high note. The one thing that we can definitely leave from the past decade is segways. They're done. We're done. We don't need them anymore. They were a flash in the pan that unfortunately burned in the pan a little bit and stuck around for a little too long, um, especially because of segway tours at tourist destinations. Um, but I think it's safe to say that because of the hoverboard craze in 2015, you can no longer see any traces of segways. And if you do, my apologies, because no one should have to look at a Segway again. The only time I want to see a Segway is if it is in a third Paul Blart mall cop movie. So let's go ahead and leave that technology in the past if we can. All right, guys, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed our countdown of all the technologies that failed over the past decade. And I'm really excited to see what's going to happen over the next 10 years. The next podcast episode, we are going to be talking about what is new in the technology world for 2020. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Technology Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Please remember to leave a review down below because we really love hearing from you guys. So let me know what you want to hear in our next episode and I will try to get it in. Thank you and I will see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow Follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.